Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack. Today is July 8th and today's episode is going to talk a whole lot about the voting system and how it needs to be initialized. We're also going to be talking about a bunch of Ethereum stuff with ECC happening. We're going to be talking about Stakers Union. We're going to be talking about a whole lot more other stuff. So let's get started. 10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Right, so before we begin, um, a quick word to say that the setup is going to be a little bit different for the next few weeks uh, in terms of like what the episodes are going to look like, the sound quality, um, if it's really, really bad, um, I might invest in a new mic, so please let me know about how the sound is sounding, um, and I'll definitely try to um, fix all that stuff, but um, let's get started with today's episode. So here um, we started with a message from Thomas saying, God damn, that ratio is low. I will over the counter buy as much RPL as anyone wants to sell me at 0 0.0047. Um, and that's on the ether RPL ratio. Um, so Thomas is definitely saying that he is willing to buy uh, RPL, which is really interesting to see because Thomas, of course, is I think the second or third third biggest um, RPL holder, and that's only after Marco Barco and the team. Um, he has over 1 million RPL now, which is pretty amazing. And he wants to buy more. So he's seeing the ratio is looking bad, and uh, he's seeing this as a buying opportunity. Now, <laughs> you've all seen my episode with Thomas of Launchpad, and you know that this guy doesn't often get calls wrong. So um, if Thomas is saying that he's buying RPL here, that's actually making me think of buying RPL here too, in all honesty. Of course, you know, Thomas will be the first to tell you that, um, you know, his trades are not financial advice for you all. And um, yeah, it's just his success ratio is absolutely amazing. Um, I remember like, you know, in our Launchpad episode, we talked about how we had like five once in a lifetime trades back to back to back. And then um, I remember last year, actually the year before now, he came into the Discord and was talking about the coin price. That's the Coinbase stock price. I think it was like $35 at the time. And he was saying that it's looking quite good here. And now it's like $250 or something crazy like that. So this is this is a something, yeah, if Thomas is saying he wants to buy, definitely pay attention to that. So anyway, with the ratio being so bad, I don't want to talk about it too long, but... Um, <laughs> Vaka made a new bot uh, that gives an output of the RPL ratio. So those of you who've been watching for a while know that he made a bot for the all-time high price and I am the keeper of the all-time high price and the way I do that is you know I can update the ratio to show the all-time high and I can update um, the dollar price to show all-time high as well. Well now he has given that power to Ramana to show all-time low. So here it says the all-time low, current all-time low ratio is 0 0.004658 and the last update on July 9th and then current uh, USD all-time low is $13.22 um, and last time that was updated was on the 9th of July as well um, and the price of course is counting since all-time high so basically since Atlas, well pretty much yeah. Um, and we are at those rates right those levels right now now one thing that's really interesting to see is that when when i was made the keeper of the all-time high ratio um i only updated the bot like i think two or three times after after i was given those powers um and i'm hoping that these these little things are kind of lining up to show that um hopefully we've seen the bottom you know thomas's um perceived bullishness maybe like if you're saying that you know if he's willing to buy as much rpl as people want to sell and then also this um all-time low ratio bot uh, kind of setting um a setting a kind of like sentiment low maybe as well so um maybe these are some trading signals that you might all want to have a look at but of course none of what i'm saying is trading advice or financial advice or any kind of advice at all for that matter um talking about something that i do want to give advice about and that is about um voting so uh, we know that you know uh, rocket pool with the houston move to on-chain voting 
and this needs to be initialized on your node. So even if you wrote it in the past, you still need to do on-chain actions now to set up your vote. And that could be to delegate your vote to yourself um, or to someone else. Um, but you need to go through the steps of initializing your vote. And then it's up to you to decide what you want to do after that. Now, um, if you want, there's a whole bunch of people in the Rocket Pool community who you can delegate your votes to. Let me um, show you. Um, what it's looking like right now. Um, so just to look at some of the names. So we have Scuzzle, Ken, Invis, Samus, Valdorf, Dave, me, uh, Rama, uh, Formax, Patches, Noshua, Vaka, Dukey, OB4, Lang Darren, Langus, um, Shifrin, Dr. Doofus as well. So you, if you want your name to be put onto this delegates website, I think you just need to message Nick and like fill out the information if you want to do that. Um, but otherwise, you know, um, some of the people who were delegated to before who were here um, are not here anymore. Like Joe, um, he was, I think, one of the top three people delegatees um, and he's not involved in Rocket Pool much anymore as close by day to day. So he felt like it's better to let those votes go to other people. But everyone needs to do this and i'll be talking about that in a few minutes about why that is but if you want there's people kind of making pitches for who you should vote for and why um and um samus you know is saying that you can vote for him ramana says you can delegate to ramana uh go to ramana .eth, and your votes will be made by an active and informed community member who wants the protocol and its substrate ethereum to succeed um and then valdov says delegate to samus Scuzzle and Schifrin. Uh, Vaka says, don't delegate to Vaka, vote for yourself. Our proposals are easy to keep up with. If you watch Rocket Fuel and you are informed enough to make, then you are informed enough to make these decisions. Um, so I'm gonna come back to that in a little while later. Um, but um, yeah, if you, if you wanna make a pitch for why you want someone to vote for you, then throw it in um, Rocket Fuel channel, not in submissions, please. Um, and um, I'll try to cover um, any of your pitches that you might have that, you know, maybe like a couple of hundred people might watch. So definitely check that. Definitely uh, let me know and I'll uh, give you a shout out. OK, so people are still trying to understand about how the whole voting system works. And one of those people here is Ken. Um, and Ken says, you know, I was away from keyboard for a while, but now I'm more confused about voting in the post Houston world. Is Are these statements correct? And he had a bunch of statements where he was still like asking questions about like who can vote, how you can vote, um, how it all works in different ways. And then other people like Noshua and here were kind of um, kind of explaining how it all works. So let me just tell you the questions and then some quick answers as well. So um, Ken says only node addresses can vote on chain, but anyone can be a node address. Like you don't have to have staked RPL. Um, and he says for a non for a non staking node address to have voting power, someone who is a staking node operator needs to delegate to that non staking node address. And he says you can't use your node address as the signal signaling address or on snapshot, but you can delegate to a different node address. That different node address can vote directly in a snapshot with your delegated power. And once delegated, you can not post snapshot remove the delegated power from the snapshot. Thus, you can not override your delegates snapshot vote you can override a delegate's vote of your voting power in an on-chain vote and then here um, Nashua gives a bit of a longer um, answer but then Halulo says yes yes uh, yes the signaling address can be any address as long as it's different from node address for which it is set but this is different from delegation you have your own signaling address distinct from your delegation signaling address you can use that to override for snapshot votes on chain there are two voting phases you can override in phase two with your node address. So then Nosh will give some more examples as well and how it all works. And then Samus replies with a meme of Charlie from Miss Old Whistle in Philadelphia with this conspiracy theory board and says this is the new <laughs> voting system. So uh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, um, it, it's basically like quite complicated, but I think more and more people are starting to get their heads around how it all works. You should read Nosh's answer here as well because it's a bit more detailed. But um, Ken, Ken loved the questions um, and basically um, there's, there's more going back and forth here about, about how it all works. So definitely read these conversations. Now, if you are interested in about who has 
and who hasn't voted Ramana made a couple of scripts here uh, sorry who's initialized their voting or not he's made a couple of scripts here that kind of uh, publish the information so the first one here is um, rocketvoting.hext and the output shows about um, there's 3,715 3, nodes that are regist registered at rocket pool um, and some of these are dead so they have no more staked RPL or staked ETH some of them are alive and ready to vote so they've got a green tick and then there's poop emoji which is a then these people are bastards that's what Ramana says and he says these people have not initialized their vote but they have staked RPL and provided ETH so it says what do you do uh, rocket pool and then there's like a rocket pool PIV and that's like the the code to get your voting initialized um, but if you have a look at the at the you know the output here you can see that most of it is a uh, poop emoji and some of it is a uh, green or ticked and some of it is it uh, doesn't have ether rpl staked anymore so here um, it says that there's 1341 dead nodes so out of 3715 this is actually really good that we have an answer now of how many people you know how many of these nodes are not really nodes anymore so um you know if we've got 1341 of them then that gives us 2400 or thereabouts um active nodes on rocket pool which is actually really cool to see and he says that there are 4000 uh, sorry i'm sorry 2044 of these bastard nodes um which is really interesting because it shows that only around um, 400 nodes have initialized their voting um so we really need people to get their votes initialized soon asap even um Raman also had this rocket delegate script that shows you uh, the voting power of uh, different people and how much vote has been delegated now um let me refresh this to see if it's changed no there's been no change that i can see so far but um i am the number one delegatee in in the whole of rocket pool now um thank you to everyone who has delegated to me um it, that's it's really touching and heartwarming that you know you guys did this so i really appreciate it but please don't delegate to me anymore <laughs> i think it was on, on weekly orbit last week where i was saying that um it's it's a lot of power and it's um you know a big responsibility and uh, it might be nice for other people to take that responsibility for a while well since then <laughs> my full power has increased dramatically like by by more than a thousand by a thousand more than a thousand votes so um i want to say thank you to all those people who have delegated to me but um you know i'm i'm, I'm getting to the point now where i've already got as many votes as i had in the previous system and we still have like you know nearly two thousand nodes that still need to initialize their voting so please don't vote for me anymore don't delegate to me anymore there are other wonderful people um who you can vote for i'm not going to personally um endorse anyone or recommend anyone in this situation uh, but there are many many people and if you have been watching rocket fuel for a while you would have heard a lot of those names being mentioned like over and over again and i'm sure any of those people will be absolutely fine but here so there's me with 1923 votes delegated to me and we also have patches with 1325 votes delegated to him um, Val has 1,297 votes delegated to him, Noshua 917, Aramana 803, um, Ken 752, Dave um, has five, well, 600, basically 597, uh, Langas has 403, and then others as well. So if you want to have a look at this, you can follow the links below. That will take you to the output of this script. But um, it's really cool that... Um, Ramana has made this a little bit more accessible for us. So that's cool, Ramana. Thank you. Okay, next we have um, people like kind of digging into um, all the smart contracts and trying to figure out how all the numbers work. And one of the things that's really interesting is that the formula for calculating your vote power has changed now. So before it was half square root. So if you had 100 RPL staked on your validator, you know, the square root of that is 10 and half of that is 5. So you would have 5 votes. However, that halving didn't really make a difference. Like it just made the numbers smaller, but it didn't actually have any impact on the voting power as a ratio of the overall stake. Of course, the square root does have, you know, a quadratic power. So the more you have, the fewer votes you have per 
per unit of RPM that you have. Um, and that, of course, is a way to kind of like balance out the playing field between the very big operators and the smaller operators. So now I think uh, what well, the, the formula has changed to make it just the square root formula, which I think is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, so even though I've got like 1,923 votes, I think it was, um, that's comparable to, you know, um, 9,700 and, sorry, 9, that's comparable to 970 votes from before or something along that line, I think. I'm not very good at math, so sorry about that. But um, yeah, people here, like Hadoodle was saying, Smart Node has total network voting power. They need to look out how it gets that information. And then Valdo said, what's that number at? And then the total voting power, Hadoodle said, is 14,441, which is not that high. Um, and um, he says that's close to, uh, Val says that's close to one quorum. So that means that, you know, the, the quorum votes are set to, 15,000 and um, Val says we'd, we'd like five percent five times that so quorum can be reached with around 20 percent of all RPL staked voting that would be that would be really great so um, yeah that's that's something definitely to look out for and then we have here uh, people trying to get the vo word out about uh, people voting on chain so um, Kev Kevster wrote this post, he says, if you're a node operator, you have to initiate on-chain voting. Thanks to Houston, we can govern up here a rocket pool on-chain. However, we need more node operators to actually initiate the voting power. Currently, we are below the threshold. So if you're a node operator and you haven't done this since Houston, please do so. And then check the instructions. There's a link to the Medium article. He says, free to feel, feel free to delegate if you don't want to bother with voting. So uh, then Hululu shared a list of possible people to delegate to. And then... Uh, Ethereum says I'd uh, urge people to choose their delegates wisely, not for the crowd or go with the popular choices just because we don't want to be in a position where a handful of individuals decide on every vote and the more diversity we have the better. And then does it cost ETH? Yes, you've got to pay for uh, pay for gas, but if you're delegating you'll just do that once and then your delegates will pay every time they vote basically on chain for the on-chain portion of their voting. Um, and then Kev says this, you can choose to delegate your vote on your behalf, which doesn't cost ETH. Um, setting it up still does. Yeah, so that's that one transaction basically to set it up. And Kev says the gas is low, so it'll, co it'll cost you less than a dollar to do that. So if that's something you're interested in doing, don't be perturbed by the cost, basically. And then after that, we had some more questions about trying to understand how things work. So here, um, Val tagged Kane. And he said, I'd like to check I'm understanding proposal.quorum right. Reading RPIP 33, it looks like this means 51% of total vote power must vote in order for a proposal to be able to succeed. It's also guardrail, guardrailed to prevent it being set lower than 51%. Since this is a massive step up from what we've been using in Snapshot, which is 15% of voting power per RPIP 4, with a path to de decrease to recover our ability to govern if needs be. And then Val says, in... In fact, I looked at the last 20 votes and saw a max of 29.7% of the vote happening with a median of 24% uh, and a mean of 23.8%. So Val says, if I'm reading this right, I'm worried about the DAO functioning at all on chain. Although thankfully we can use Snapshot to ask the ODAO to change the voting and the guardrail. So what Val is here saying is that the way that the contract was written, this is uh, untenable. And, you know, we're not going to get this many people voting because the quorum set too high. Um, I don't know if um, Kane actually replied to Valdorf or not, but this is the kind of thing that, like, kind of gets brought up to the team and then they go away and they kind of talk about it and then they discuss it. So actually here, yeah, uh, Kane did reply, he says, that's correct. And the change to the guardrail requires a contract upgrade, as you know. There is a hot fix in the works, so there's potentially a chance to include the change there if it's prohibitive and a new minimum value can be agreed on. Um, and he says, wouldn't, no, oh, Sam says, wouldn't keeping the same 15% used for snapshot make sense? And uh, Valdorf then says, you know, there's two questions, the starting point and the minimum guardrail. One difference from snapshot so far is the initialized thing, at least early on. My instinct is 20 to 25% start. Idealized addresses will skew likely to vote, delegate initially, and 15% guardrail, but that's a temporary state. And then Kane said oh, we'd also be open to the idea of proposing an upgrade, which solely changes the guardrail. As it's just a value change, there's not much need for a lengthy testing or auditing situation. So hopefully that, that this will be changed soon. And then um, 
yeah, um, the, this was Langer's sharing information. And he said that this theory is working on 50% original law of Howard assumption. That would be um, 47,842 votes. Um, but I'm open to suggestions in terms of disabling bootstrap. We need to have the Security Council set up and a couple of proposals under our belt. We essentially just want to make sure things are working well. To be more concrete, we could say once the Security Council is placed and tested and the IMC GMC payments have been automated, we will disable the bootstrap very soon after. So, um, yeah. Um, and then Langers gave a shout out to Val saying, you did a great job checking about that uh, proposal quorum number. And Val says the main uh, credit goes to Halilo. So, yeah, that's really cool work, Halilo. Congrats once again. And then um, there was some discussion here about, uh, you know, how... Um, the order would need to move the guardrail and the guardian to lower it basically and how that might work so you can really give that discussion a, a read as well and then uh, <laughs> lula says that there's a public shaming script you know the one that uh, i showed you from val uh, sorry not val ramana and um he says what we need now is the mega whales to vote um and in, well not to vote sorry to initialize their vote i mean so you know here we have um thomas with a whole lot of votes. I think his previous votes were uh, 1,000 votes or thereabouts. So now he'll have uh, even more than that. Um, well, of course, you know, because it's not square, half square root. And then we also have uh, 1KX, who have had about 600 votes before. And we had Thomas, sorry, not Thomas, uh, Marco Barco and Patricio. And I think they had 1,500 votes. They were the biggest voting entity as far as I remember. So that uh, you know with those guys coming online that should help us get more of the uh, rpl stake you know set up for for voting which would be really good and then val kind of put out a message similar to what i started this episode with um saying that uh, you know please consider someone with less vote power and he says i have suggestions in my profile and he says i'm deeply involved in uh, rocket pool in narrow ways such as to blah, 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 governance tokenomics actually let's go and have a look at what val statements is because I would probably like echo my sentiment quite similarly to that, with the difference between being that, of course, Val will um, Val mentioned names, but I didn't mention names. So Val here says, you know, as of the 9th of uh, July, he says, I have uh, the third most vote power, so I'd love it if you delegated further down the list. Samus and Scuzzle are both highly technical people like myself. Um, that could be a good substitute for that reason. I'd also like to shout out Vaka, Shifrin, and Invis. At this point, my vote power is not so great that I'd be annoyed by delegations. But if you're insured between two or more, then I encourage you to go with the lowest vote power of your options. So I think that kind of statement is quite similar to what I'm saying as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, basically what Val said, I also said. <laughs> but like the people, without mentioning the people's names, of course, but the other part is, yeah. Um, but I actually am getting to that point now where, um, you know, I think 2000 should be the upper limit for any one person to have that vote power from delegates from delegate from delegates um and i think i'd start getting uncomfortable with more than that so thank you so much for your trust in me but um please don't give me more votes <laughs> okay then vacuum kind of makes a case for why you should be voting yourselves and he says that neg there's negligible gas compared to the cost of creating mini pools and claiming rewards. There's negligible effort when compared with keeping your node updated and keeping going rocket fuel. I think it's underestimates the benefits in the community building and decentralization of the protocol. De delegation risks lowering the overall node operator attention. Not delegating might increase the risk of not reaching quorum. We shouldn't promote delegation for people that are aware of votes and have enough time and attention to make an informed decision. I actually really like this idea. Um, so Vaka, of course, says you know that if you watch Rocket Fuel, you're basically informed enough to be able to make your own decisions. So if you watch Rocket Fuel and if you're a node operator and you have validators set up, then vote yourselves. It'll cost you maybe a dollar or a couple of dollars at a time, but you are actually adding a lot to Rocket Pool by doing that. Um, and, you know, if you watch every episode, then I go through the votes. I kind of explain the different positions that got us to where the vote is and um, also kind of give you details and, you know, what the outcomes of the vote will be. With that amount of information, like what Vaka here is saying, is that you should be able to make a decision of what you think, right? And 
that then you can spend that dollar or two dollars or whatever it might cost for you to vote to do it yourselves um, and that's all you need to do you don't need more than that but if you if you are aware of the issues that are happening but you still don't want you still give the power to someone else then you know you're centralizing you're centralizing our voting in rocket pool and then you have people like Val and myself making statements about choosing other people if you want, you know. So um, I really like this message from Vaka. So that was a good guy, Vaka, there. Okay, so that is all done with the voting section of this episode. Uh, uh, but now we've got some news from Joe. And this is just a little tidbit, but you guys know I love Joe. So I always love covering the information Joe's giving. So he comes with an announcement of the work that he's doing. And then there is a screen capture of command um command line interface and he says constellation service provider blah 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 and then it says rocket pool rocket pool so basically what he is working on is integrating um their con the constellation module uh, which is you know the rocket pool layer two of sorts on into hyperdrive which is node sets version of their smart node which i think is a fork of the smart node actually no that's not true it's just it shares some similarity in the code base common common code base i think i need to read about that again i remember joe saying that there was a common code base basically and they both draw from that but if you're a smart node operator then i think hyperdrive will be very intuitive and very similar to that but i'm not sure exactly if it's because it's a fork or if they use a common common code base so that's something to, for me to find out more about but anyway um here joe says that um um yeah i was i was mentioning kind of joe about you know, asking about his votes and he says that it seemed appropriate to defer to more active people which i mentioned earlier but then um about here with um with Constell constellation he says this is a constellation module for hyperdrive which uses rocket pool go he said i've come full circle and then um pateris was asking some questions about how it works and then he says that he's building constellation off of smart node version 2 and then Pateris actually shared a little bit of information saying that he's been working on adding SSV, which is um, distributed validated technology into the smart node version 2. And he says it's been a very pleasant experience so far. And then I said I'm going to go record rocket fuel, but I didn't actually record rocket fuel at that point. <laughs> it took me a little while longer to get started on that. So, yeah, this is this is really nice. Uh, it was nice that Joe popped in. So um, I wish he came by more often. Okay, um, Symbiotic is a new liquid restaking protocol, kind of a, like a competitor to Eigen there, and they are actually growing fast. Um, and one of the tokens they're using to grow is Rocket Pools R ETH, which is actually really cool. So Mig here shared a screenshot of the Symbiotic R ETH vault, and he says this is now full, and the the third most valuable pot in their pool is R ETH. And it's already a quarter of the eigen layer uh, vault, which is actually pretty cool to see. So um, it's nice that there's some demand for our ETH going into Symbiotic. I've not actually, I've not actually deposited into this. I've just been so busy recently that I've not had a chance to do it. And they, they keep closing their windows really quickly because it maxes out. Um, I really wanted to get into one of the earlier rounds and take away some of my ETH that I'm restaking up with eigen layer for the airdrop farming to put it into Symbiotic to farm a new airdrop. I mean, it's like the easiest, most passive form of airdrop farming if you get in early enough. But um, I'm really glad that people are actually going in there with um, R ETH. And, uh, and yeah, that's that's really cool to see. So I thought I'd share that with you all. Okay, and a few weeks ago, I mentioned that there was a bug with, um, with um, Rocket Split, which is the marriage contract that Ramano made that was a development of the one that him and i used for our marriage but then also um, you know the one that he used for his marriage with love points and ramana had news here that he's deployed a new version of it and he's now setting up a rocket split.eth for it and that was done so that was actually really cool and then uh, direct from long island blockchain said i'm almost ready in the front end running some tests again with Haleshki, a little bit of refactoring and then he said, uh, Ramana said, yeah, please make sure that everything that I've posted is actually matches what um, what the contract is supposed to be, etc. So that's pretty cool that that is fixed. Hopefully more people might want to use Rocket Split now. The great thing about Rocket Split that is different from like just having regular uh, withdrawal address is you can tweak how the rewards get distributed. Like, for example, 
with having Houston uh, marriages. You know, the ETH just goes to the ETH, the RPL just goes to the RPL withdrawal addresses. So it doesn't give you much like space for customization. However, with Rocket Split, what you can do is, you know, if there's more demand for providing RPL for marriage, then you can kind of ask the ETH provider to give you some ETH rewards. Whereas if it's a period where there's a lot of ETH providers available and not much RPL, then um, the ETH provider, wait, did I get that right? Basically, you can like tweak who gets what depending on market dynamics. And I think that's a really, really cool system to use. When I was getting married, Ramana, I think, well, it was one of the first shrimp marriages, so that doesn't really count, but um, I decided to give Ramana some um, commission because I wanted to get married like quite desperately. And I guess Ramana could wait it out until he found someone to give him some commission. So that actually like you know, ended up being a fair amount, but my RPL wouldn't have gotten staked otherwise, so it kind of made sense for me to just do it. Um, and we've actually nearly fully divorced now. We just have one valid agent running uh, for now. But um, yeah, if you if you do wanna if you do wanna get married to anyone, then definitely check out Rocket Split to do that to, for that level of customization. Or as always, you can just stick with the Houston protocol level marriages now. Okay, next we have some news from the GMC, and this news is about. Uh, the new grants round starting so the most recent grants round started on sunday and it will run until august 7th uh, so if you are interested in applying for a grant for yourself a bounty uh, you, you want to set up for someone else to do the work or if you want to um, apply for a retroactive award um, for work that you've already completed then go and apply for those you've got um, about four more weeks to get that work done which is pretty cool and then as always you know for grants around 14 with that period finishing a couple of days ago we had a couple of people who have started giving their feedback for um for their um uh, what they think that should happen you know what the, what they think the gmc should do so like for retros here um val gives green circle green circle for grants he said no to hub don't don't pay them but with rocket rescue node pay them patches pay him Ethereum, um, protocol security, uh, don't pay them. Uh, with Rocket Fuel, he puts like, like kind of uh, yes, but with caveats, with some questions about like who watches and who doesn't. You can go and look at those yourselves. And then renewal for Rocket Pool community call co-hosting with Ken. Um, he uh, actually put a question mark with a yes, so he asked some questions there as well. With um, Pateris, then also gave feedback. And um, he, kind of similar to some of the things that Val was saying for Rocket Fuel, for Rocket Fuel he said, Fund Day, uh, he's Wax been very consistent and even over delivers, which was really nice to say. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that. But um, it's always nice from the GMC's perspective for us to have a lot of these um, feedback, uh, you know, pieces, because that actually helps us a lot. Like we really do listen to this community guidance about how we want to um, award projects so uh, please take you know 10 20 30 probably 30 minutes maybe uh, to have a look at the grants uh, sorry all the different applications and just give us like a couple of lines feedback about what you think um, you know the GMC should be doing with this I promise you like my, I definitely read all of these and I think other GMC members read most if not all of the GMC members read all of these as well so um, it's really valuable, like, um, in, input, and uh, the GMC really appreciates it, so make sure you do it. <laughs> okay, and talking about the GMC, next we have a town hall that will be pl taking place on Wednesday the 10th at um, 6 p.m. on um, UK time, so that will be at 1 p.m. Eastern time, I think. I'm really bad with time zones. I've been like so confused these last few days. So yeah, um, definitely check out that town hall meeting. Go to the GMC server, and um, you can see it. You can see it there. So and that will show you the information in your local time zone. But um, yeah, that that is something that um, you should take part in. And I think there's some always some good like information that comes up in in those calls. I really like taking part in them. So definitely um, pop along, and and we'll love to meet you there. Okay, um, next we have a discussion that kind of came up between Mike from 1KX and Noshua 
about the tokenomics proposals so there was like like a lot of back and forth here i'm not really going to go through it all here because there's a lot going on but there was a little bit of like clashing and sparring a little bit so if you want to get some of that drama basically you can follow the link in the description and kind of follow along with that but um my, the, basically the gist of it is Mike, Mike starts by asking you know are there any node operators who plan to go ETH only if the rework proposal passes and um, then uh, um, Rocket Doc replied by saying uh, me personally I'm not buying more ETH to run more mini pools I do have more RPL that I could stake but I'm limited by my ETH and then um, Mike kind of said that I suspect there's a lot of people in that boat and with bond curves like um, how you know you don't have to add more RPL um, to be able to get more validators uh, which is nice you don't have to add, add more ETH sorry even to get more validators and then uh, Hodges says I plan to hold RPL until we have an irrational bull market and then here um, yeah so Mike was saying basically that uh, you know the rework is being pitched as we allow node operators to operate without RPL exposure and will be competitive with Lido. He said, I'm concerned some people will think that both of these things will be true simultaneously um, when actually node operators will need to pick one or the other. So uh, Nosh would then reply by saying the proposal will actually allow node operators to be competitive with Lido both uh, with, uh, without RPL, with RPL uh, as well. Uh, so then Mike kind of says, you know, the the rework only offers ETH only node operators 3.5% of commission whereas Lido offers them 7.5% so say if you want more than 3.5% you need to stake RPL of course the universal adjustable revenue split parameters can be tweaked but that's the offer on the table from the rework right now and Steely says there will be 7% uh, currently uh, and then Nosha says Mike is re misrepresenting the proposal and Lido's offering so then this is what I'm saying is a back and forth. But I don't really want to get into all the drama of it. I'm just letting you know there was drama in this discussion. Uh, but um, definitely, uh, definitely, you know, follow up with that. The mic responded by saying, that's a severe accusation, not sure. The numbers are in the proposal for anyone to see. What specifically do you think I'm misrepresenting? And Nashua says the proposal is dynamic, adjusting the node operator share upwards is part of the proposal. 3.5% is the starting value that is intentionally chosen low. There isn't consensus about where we will end up. My personal expectation is matching Lido within a few weeks. So um, then he says, where's the misrepresentation you accuse me of? I know from my message that the UARS parameters can be tweaked in the future. And then he says, the goal is explicitly being competitive um yeah and then mike says you know why are you offering 3.5 percent when the competition is offering 7 or 7.5 percent Nosho says first of all that's not me it's a proposal and i explicitly explicitly disagree with that part of it um so yeah <laughs> um and then val actually had an interesting comment about how it's not actually comparing the same thing so the idea is well i you can read you can go ahead and read it all yourselves Okay, next we have this update from Hululo, and Hululo here is, um, did a rocket split, uh, no, not rocket split, there's so many things with rocket names, rocket, um, rocket sweep, rocket sweep, I think it's rocket sweep, sorry Hululo, I'm tired, it's late, uh, did a rocket sweep uh, check, no, rocket sweep is uh, Dean McCartney's thing, he did a rocket scrape, rocket scrape, that's what it is, Rocket Scrape uh, test to see who has gotten most thumbs up from Cron uh, or like, you know, um, helped Cron by identifying spam. And Hulu actually is at number 210 now on the all time list. Uh, number one with 210. Patches number two with 160. Lee number three with 122. Then Ramana, Invis, and they're both above 100. Then Val, Pateris, Object, Yoakam, Steely, um, and others as well so these are the top 25 who have um who have brought the uh, cron's attention to spammers so um that's really cool that's a nice list there so those people are all really cool and lee says that i want the cron drop so i think what cron should do is like share a part of their um um <laughs> share a part of their uh 
um, money they get as being uh, one of the rocket scientist node split people uh, and give that to people who help him do the job. Maybe he can set up a cron raffle, kind of like I have a rocket fuel raffle and every month he gives like a percentage of, of his uh, or, or her or uh, their um, income to to people who report i think that would actually be really nice i can't imagine cron doing that though cron's way too serious for that but that, that would be really cool okay we've got to some ethereum news now and here we have a new uh, blog post from vitalik and this one's called epochs and slops all the way down ways to give ethereum users faster transaction confirmation times so this is actually a big discussion that was taking place on crypto twitter about whether or not ethereum could have faster block times and um, you know faster confirmation times and how that could work. Well, Vitalik here says one of the important properties of good blockchain is user experience is fast transaction confirmation times. Today, Ethereum has already improved a lot compared to five years ago. Thanks to a combination of EIP 1559 and steady block times after the merge, transactions sent by users on layer one reliably confirm within five to 20 seconds. Now, where does the five number come from? Of course, blocks are 12 seconds long, so if you send your transaction kind of halfway through that process, you could potentially get it done in five seconds. You could be included in that. However, if you miss a slot, like you know, if you're gas, you didn't set it properly, then it will likely go through the next block or the next slot, I guess, when the block is in that slot. Um, and then, you know, that'd be like 20 or so seconds. So that's quite quick. Um, Vitalik says, this is roughly competitive with the experience of paying with a credit card. However, there is value in improving user experience further and there's some applications that outright require latencies of the order of hundreds of milliseconds or even less. This post will go over some of the practical options that Ethereum has. So like Vitalik says, he mentions here, you know, the overview of existing ideas and techniques. So he talks about single snot finality. And then he talks about roll up pre-confirmations, based pre-confirmations. And this is what are we actually looking at here? This is um, then gives some information there as well. And then he says, you know, what can layer twos do as well? So uh, Vitalik covers a whole bunch of things in here. So you can definitely go and give that a read if you want to get Vitalik's takes on these issues. Okay, next I wanted to bring Stakers Union to your attention once again. And I have mentioned Stakers Union on Rocket Fuel before, but Stakers Union kind of went through a small push recently with the work that they're doing. And I think they got their website up and running and stuff. So here, you know, their Twitter bio says uh, a collective of home stakers for the Ethereum network help build our proposal. And then there's docs.stakersunion.com. But if you go and have a look at Stakers Union, uh, you can see that, you know, they call themselves a collective of home stakers for the Ethereum network. And then you can become a member. And the way you become a member is by like signing transactions on your node or sign. Yeah. And then um, sending those to them. And like there's a whole way. I haven't actually done that yet, but... I should do that. But anyway, they say that the union, their home to home, we are home stakers on the Ethereum network. We have chosen to prioritize the health and decentralization of the Ethereum network over all else. The problem that they have is incentives for home stakers are dwindling. Liquid staking and restaking protocols and their associated liquid tokens drive many away from home staking. So in some cases, you know, your tax, there's tax preferences to LST or LRT holding instead of home staking, etc. And the solution says that we aim to build a registry of interested home stakers to support the activities by securing stable incentives from ecosystem participants. So this, I think, would lead to like airdrops and other things like that. So signing up for the union, I think, might be might be a good idea. Um, so they're here they've got, you know, the first union of home stakers and they said that launched the stakers union. They've already done this. Define the union structure. They've done this as well. And there's on the document site. And then the grow the community and they're they're actively doing this which is why you might have seen their name recently they've been getting like a few like prominent retweets mentioned on daily way and things like that and then next they want to build the partnerships you know once they've got like um, a substantial number of people uh, like in the union then they'll have power right like the more people that are in the union the more power they'll have and then more power they have they can bring perks to their union members which is really cool uh, so in build partnerships and say establish partnerships with other organizations and projects in the Ethereum ecosystem, collaborate on initiatives that benefit home stakers and promote the health of the network. And then finally develop an incentive program. So design and implement incentive programs to support home stakers and encourage participation in the union, create mechanisms for distributing rewards and tracking contributions, which is actually really cool to see as well. So uh, good luck to the stakers union. Um, I hope they do good stuff. 
Okay, next we know that ETCC is happening in Paris right now. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with Pectra. And here there's a screenshot that Ken shared with Pectra. So he says that Pectra has, Pectra has a very high probability of the being here in the first half of 2025, likely in Q125. So that's interesting that there's no official timeline, but this is what this speaker was giving. I'm not sure who that is speaking. So sorry, but it seems like someone in the, in the, um, in the Ethereum like ecosystem. There's a little meme there. Never ask a woman her age. Never ask a man his salary. Never ask a core developer when hard fork. So that kind of kind of breaking all, uh, that a little bit. Then there's EIP four 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 four. So core developers aim to implement it before the full load size increases two terabytes, which is expected to happen in about two years. This change doesn't require a hard fork. And then with Verkle, so it's planned after Pectra. This is expected no sooner than Q4 of 25. It's likely to be in 2026 with EPBS and Kubelu's in this. So it's not scheduled for any specific hard fork. They're currently in the research and prototyping phase. And then issuance reduction is in the research and discussion phase. It's not clear when it will be included. And then there were a couple of different talks here that you can watch. So this one about issuance says, what's the issue with issuance? Why are people talking about changing issuance at all? Discussing the origins of the issuance debate from the ground up. Um, and then there's another talk here as well from Justin Drake. And if you give me a second, I can tell you what some of the things about those two talks that were said. So with um, with the one from um, the issue with issuance here, wooden ship shared this information saying, uh, perspectives on the issue with the current ETH protocol demand curve for validators and um, supply impacts from large LSTs. And that was hosted by ETH Staker. And there'll be another talk about that on Thursday. And then with Justin Drake, this was about execution tickets as an attester proposal separation solution. It says a fundamental change to staking in which the ideal outcome would be no issuance, no income tax, and real income gains from increased scarcity of ETH via MEV slash ticket burn, the disperse benefits um, all ETH holders and concentrated costs of validating are assumed to be overcome by lower cost to validate. So that's that topic. And then this actually was a topic that um, came up, um, or something like it was kind of came up in the Rocket Pool, um, in the Rocket Pool uh, Discord, where Mike from 1KX again, kind of had an idea about adding RPL collateral as a way of um, doing some kind of like this stuff with with Ethereum. And then da Jasper kind of replied by saying that, um, you know, this, what, what you're saying is I'm kind of uh, opposed to the idea of execution tickets because they can act as a centralizing force um, because uh, people can, you know, you can select the highest bidder uh, and then if the people have you know a little bit quicker information which tends to be the bigger insider slash centralized actors then they can they can get more control over those tickets so um, it might be bad for the home sticker so there's definitely a lot of discussions coming up around this is still a very uh, controversial issue um so yeah anyway talking about other controversial issues here um kt Viber says that history has been made. Crypto is in the official GOP platform. For those of you who don't know, the GOP is the Republican Party in the US. Of course, Donald Trump is going to be the, the, their presidential nominee. Um, and it's the, here, Katie says, Republicans will end Democrats' unlawful and un American crypto crackdown and oppose the creation of central bank digital currency. We will defend the right to mine Bitcoin and ensure every American has a right to self custody of their digital assets and transact free from government surveillance and control. And then if you actually have a look at the document, the main quote is on page nine, um, where it just says that, um, wait, where is that? There's some next page. Um, wait, actually I lost it, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, there it is, yeah, it's on page nine. Uh, so with crypto, so this is champion under the championing innovation section. It says Republicans will end Democrats on North and American blah blah blah. It's the same thing as the tweet, but that is that's there now in the MAGA platform. So this is the official document, the GOP uh, twenty twenty four platform, make America great again. Now this of course is not a comment on politics, it's not an endorsement of any political party, but I'm just 
stating it as a statement of fact and quoting the the verbiage around it around this particular issue so um i'll leave you to make your own political decisions about how you want to proceed with that information okay a couple of like uh, housekeeping items just to finish up today's episode of rocket fuel so um for those of you who've been watching like last few weeks you know that i'm traveling as you can tell by my poor uh, production quality and <laughs> everything <laughs> it's kind of bad today sound quality and all that kind of stuff but um if you if you've been watching along you kind of know that you know i'm traveling right now so um i said that there will probably be that i record 12 episodes over the four weeks that i'm traveling instead of like the normal 20 or so um so then i asked this question to the community i said would you rather have more frequent rocket fuel episodes that don't go as deep into the topics or would you rather have more detailed episodes but a bit less frequent so the idea that i was thinking of was maybe i can still record five episodes a week uh, because that way you know i still stay fresh and have all the information and it gives me a little bit more continuity with the work it doesn't pile up as much um but obviously because i'm on vacation it'll be hard to dedicate as much time so what would end up happening is you know some of the information wouldn't be as deep some of the explanations might not be as thorough um so that's one side of it the other side is you know i could still make more detailed episodes but they might be less frequent because i might need a little bit more time to get everything kind of ready i know that this doesn't make sense like well what would happen for example if i had three hours for work right you know just recording an episode and processing and all that kind of stuff can take um well no three three hours in a given day i mean like if i had for work if i was to do that for um if i was to do like try to make a rocket fuel episode with that that would be an hour and a half just making the episode um so i wouldn't really have enough time there to um to make an episode and get the information i needed but if i had three hours on day one and three hours on day two what i could do is you know use that hour and a half whatever of the actual making the episode to stuff and all that uh, to go to the next day and then maybe i could kind of cobble that together and put an episode out so that's kind of the way that i'm thinking of it right now um and i had um, five people respond four people respond and all of them said they would rather have more frequent episodes so that was something that i thought i might try doing today but this episode is still 50 minutes long so yeah i don't know how to make short episodes i guess sorry about that guys but um yeah uh, i don't have to make short episodes i think it's, it's a big problem that i have but i'll try maybe from tomorrow i'll try to make shorter episodes for the next few weeks and try to do it daily instead of uh, letting it pile up because that's what's happened here this is like you know four four days worth of content episode so yeah okay and finally we have the raffle for june um these the people who um are getting this raffle you know the lot was locked in on um july 1st at four dollar sorry four point nine seven rpl something like that so some of the contributors this month included sneaky and number one again instead of samus so samus blue avm me jasper mig shifrin romana hulu vaca tennis uh brave new DeFi, and a whole bunch of others um and this month there were 38 contributors no not actually 38 there were um 35 contributors so what i'm going to do as always is i'm going to copy and paste those into this really great um app that uh Club Procretry has made for me and when i press go then it will give us um it will give us um oh no invalid formatting for hulu that's not good let me see if i can fix that without breaking it oh yeah okay i think i can then let me see if this works now nope, still invalidating invalid oh wait actually maybe i think i can edit this here so where's hello and why is he breaking it i don't know why that's invalid okay i'm on game only so i can't edit that let me see what's happened here okay maybe that fixed it if it's broken i'm sorry Ah, there we go. So Don does number one, Samus number two, me, we skip me, Jasper gets it, um, Sneaky Ninja Guy gets it, Noshua gets it, Chaos gets it, Tennis MVP gets it, and then Blue AVM and make the nice one. So, you know, I have 10 prizes that go out. Wolfie doesn't do the summary anymore. 
so Wolfie doesn't get anything for that. Um, Cheers did the raffle contributions, so Cheers gets an automatic ticket, and then of course I don't get one. Um, so that means that um, top nine sort of the blue AVM, I think, if I'm counting it right, I need to make sure about that. We'll get prizes. No, that's not right. Yeah, nine. So it will go to make the nice one as well. It will go to me. So that's nine, and then Cheers becomes ten, and then the rocket tool in turn will get paid for a different pot so that doesn't count here as well so yeah dondo samus jasper sneaky noshua chaos tennis mvp blue avm and mig um i think dondo is a first time winner here which is really cool i don't even remember what dondo's contribution was but i think he just had one submission so that's actually really cool no he had three submissions good job dondo but yeah congratulations to everyone who won the raffle this month um so yeah thank you all then for watching listening and being part of the rocket fuel community i hope you all can um, afford me some patience whilst i'm getting everything set up on this vacation episodes for the next month that you're going to be experiencing please 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 do tell me what you think of the audio quality if the audio quality is good then i'll just keep recording the way i am and if audio quality if the audio quality is not good then i'll have to figure out a way of purchasing a microphone or something like that i didn't bring my regular microphone because it's like this big it's as big as my head and i didn't have the baggage space to do that so sorry but anyway um i'll see you all tomorrow bye